Hi, boys and girls. Today we're going to do something totally different that we haven't done before. And this is a great thing to use as a gift for somebody um, or just for fun. So we're going to be making salt flour water dough. I'm going to teach you how. Now, if you don't have these materials at home, you can maybe ask the next time somebody goes shopping if they can get them and you can do it together. You can rewatch this video with your family. I'm going to show you how to make the dough, how to mix the dough, and how to make it into something. And then I'm going to give you instructions on what you have to do later. There's going to be two videos that go with this. There's going to be the making of the dough video and the making of the project. And then there's going to be what happens after you bake it because you have to bake this. So you definitely will need adult help. So part of my head's gonna be cut off in this video because I wanted you to see everything I have here on the table. We're going to start with two cups of flour. So flour usually comes in a nice big bag like this and it will have this gold seal on it. It's very messy. <laughs> so please don't make a mess. Your families will be upset with me. And I need two cups of it. So I have a measuring cup and in the middle folds two cups. You can use also smaller dry measure cups, but I don't have those. So I have to use what I have, just like you guys at home. So what I'm gonna do, I have to open my bag a little better and don't laugh at me if I spill it all over because you know Mrs. Jones, it's a good chance I'm gonna spill it all over. <laughs> so I'm gonna pour it into my cup. Oh, I'm doing pretty good for myself here. All right, good job. Don't spill it, don't spill it. I didn't spill it. Okay, let's see. Exactly two cups. So it lands right on the two, and I'm gonna pour it into my big bowl. That's step number one. So I'm gonna take the flour, I'm gonna move that out of the camera's view, and the next step is salt. You will need a cup of salt. So it's double the amount of flour, or half the amount of flour for the salt. So here we go. So two cups of flour, one cup of salt, in case I just confused you, because I kind of confused myself. Good thing Mrs. Jones is the art teacher, not the math teacher. <laughs> right, Miss Fields? Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna keep going. I need an entire cup. That's a lot of salt. It's a lot of salt. So you have to make sure that you're allowed to use this amount of salt. So there you go. It's at the one cup mark. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pour it in. So now I have my salt and my flour, so it's kind of like I'm baking a cake. I'm gonna roll my, look at that, I read the mess. I'm gonna roll my sleeves up and I'm gonna start to mix it a little bit so it mixes together while it's still dry. Because the next step is a little hard. The next step is going to be adding the water and mixing it with your hands. I'm wondering if we should mix with a spoon first. Well, I don't have a spoon, so I'm gonna use my hands, but you might wanna try a spoon at home. Mrs. Jordan should have brought a spoon in here. But here we go, anyway, I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna add one cup of water, which I already had pre-done, pre-made. Some recipes online will tell you to mix in one cup of boiling water. Of course, I don't agree with that because you're gonna be putting your hands in it. So other ones tell you to do one cup of cold water. I did one cup of medium water, lukewarm as they call it. So I'm mixing my dough. And as you can see, it's starting to get stuck on my hands, right? Because it's very pasty. I'm only using one hand right now because I'm gonna need my other hand to get the dough off. And I'm gonna start to knead it. So now I'm taking it the extra off and I'm gonna pull it together and I'm gonna to start to knead my dough until I'm able to get most of the loose granules up. And as you do that, it's gonna to start to feel like Play-Doh and less and less of it will get stuck to your hands. So see, not as much as getting stuck to my hands. Because, so you can't be afraid to do it. You can't be afraid to make a mess. You can try with a spoon first, but once the, it starts to get really stuck to the spoon, you're going to have to take it off. Okay. So I'm kneading it. I have, see how I have a nice big bowl too? 
because I don't want to get it all over my table yet. I'm not ready for that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do two projects so that you can see. You could do one of these. You could do two of these. But now I have, it almost looks like bread now. See that? So now, guess what I have, guys? Clay. And especially for my friends that didn't get to do clay with me this year, this is a way that you can make a type of clay at home. And guess what? Because you can bake this in the oven and it won't hurt anything, it's a good way to make a nice permanent clay. You can't drink water out of it or put food in it because the paint that you'll use and the varnish that you use for this isn't good for food. However, you can make some really cute things. But I was thinking, during these times, we're all stuck inside together. And I thought it might be nice if we did something that reminded us of this time when we've been together all the time, right? Because even though it's hard, you're going to look back on this in a few years and remember some really special things about it. You're going to remember doing fun things with your family, maybe. Or being able to be in your pajamas all day long. Taking classes on the computer for those of you who love to be on the computer all the time. <laughs> so I'm going to take half of my dough. You can use all of it, but I'm just going to do half. You're going to need a piece of cardboard or something that's not paper to put it on. And what I'm going to do is I want to flatten mine so that I can make it... I'm going to make mine into a circle like this, just like this. So you can do a couple different things with this. If you have small brothers and sisters, they could do their handprint in here, or a baby can do a footprint in here. I'm going to use fingerprints. I think it's kind of neat to do our fingerprints. We could do our fingerprints all the way around to make a design. And everybody in the family can be part of it so that it's something that's special. What I'm going to do, I want my fingerprints to be a little bit longer, not just the tip, because I want it to look like a flower when I'm done. So as I push down, there goes one. So I, oh, actually I should use a different finger, right? Now, you could do your fingers, and then you could have maybe your mom do her fingers on the other side. There we go. So now we have a fingerprint flower. I want to remember that this is the year 2020. And so I think what I want to do is I'm going to get a pencil. Excuse me. I'm going to grab a pencil and I'm going to dig into it with a 20. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. With a 20. So that's going to stay right in the middle. And then what I would have to do is take it off of here because I can't keep it. Hmm. Probably should have maybe put foil under it. All right, boys and girls, I'm going to tell you something. Maybe you want to put a little bit of foil under it, but it's still, I got it off. It was a little hard to get it off. I'm going to put this on a cookie sheet with some parchment paper underneath of it. And I'm going to bake this for three hours. Once I've baked it for three hours, it's gonna get really hard. Then I'm going to let it sit again for another whole day before I add my paint. So that's why Mrs. Jones is going to do two different videos. I'm gonna do my video from today, making it, and then I'm gonna do a video tomorrow after I've taken it out of the oven and I'm able to paint it. So for this part, we made a fingerprint flower for Mother's Day. You could instead, if you wanted to, hey, I have an idea. You don't have to put foil. We're gonna do it like we do when we're baking. I'm gonna take a little bit of flour this time. And I'm gonna cover my board. And now this time, I'm going to take this one and I'm going to uh, squish it down because I really want to be able to fit my whole hand print. Now, I'm a grown up, so my hands are a lot bigger than your hands. 
So when I pull that, when I do this, I might not get my whole hand in there, but ugh, there you go. He did it. <laughs> my hand. Look at my hand. I did the whole thing. Okay. So same thing. I can go ahead. Ugh, the flower was much better. Use flour. And then I can pull it off. And this is also going to get baked. After Mrs. Jones has finished baking it, there's going to be a part two video that shows you how to paint it and how to varnish it. So this is going to be a lot of fun, boys and girls. I'm really happy that you got to do this. You got to make your own Play-Doh. I would not recommend adding food coloring to this like other Play-Doh. Play-Doh that you find in the containers in the store, the dye that they use to make it colored won't get on your hands. But if you add it to this, it will stain your hands. So that's why we're going to bake it while it's still this color. And we're going to add our paint after. This is a great project to do for birthdays, holidays, Mother's Day, all different types of holidays. It's really something that's a lot of fun. And I think you're going to enjoy it. So this is video number one. And stay tuned for video number two that shows you what to do after it has been baked. Now, if you don't have access to be able to bake this, maybe your oven's not working. Maybe you're not allowed to bake it. Maybe your mom or your grandma or your aunt or your uncle's like, you are not baking that in my oven. Let it air dry. But you have to let it air dry for a whole week before you can paint it. So some of you are going to see this video back to back. Those of you that are in my school, you're going to see this video separated by one week. This way, you don't have to bake it. You can just let it air dry for one whole week if you're not allowed to put it in the oven. Make sure that when you do this project, you're doing it with a grown-up. If you can't do this project, but you just really liked to watch this, that's okay. If you're in my school, click turned in. If you are from my community and my church, just give a thumbs up. You did a great job. I would love to see videos of you making these too. So you can certainly send me videos of what you got to do when you were making it. But don't make a mess. Okay? I miss you guys. So I hope you had fun making this project. And I'll see you in video number 